Uh oh, what do we got here? Khashoggi. <laughs> yeah, they found him. Uh oh. It's not a good story. This is not a good ending. Not a good ending to a, a, a saga of the journalist who runs away from his home country and is pursued by thugs. I don't know. Are they thugs and is he a journalist? Let's find out. You know, a movie comes to mind. You're going to love this shit. Fucking love this shit. Right, she love this shit? Antonio. Antonio. Uh, Give me the fucking money. Ah, shit. No. No. <laughs> Remember that shit, man? That's fucking crazy shit, right? Ah, Scarface, right? So, what's going on here? What's going on here? So, um... Jamal Khashoggi, right, is a journalist. And he's been missing since October 2nd. And he was in exile from his home country, Saudi Arabia. Saudi citizen. He's not an American citizen. Don't let the left spin that for you. Don't let the fucking do that shit to you. Uh, so he's a Saudi citizen, a Saudi journalist, right? But he's a lot more than that. I want to read about this because this, this, this story, there's something fishy about this story because i know people love you know who's 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 first of all who's leading the charge in saying that it's a journalist they chopped him into pieces it's already been shown by the way that uh it's 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 it, turkish news is um uh, is uh reporting that khashoggi's body parts uh there's evidence that the saudis lured him into the embassy in Turkey, and chopped them up into a million pieces. So, but the the um, the Washington Post here in the U.S. is reporting vigorously that it's a journalist, and that Trump is somehow turning his eye, and Pompeo is turning his eye, turning their back to the the horrific events of a journalist getting chopped to pieces. All right. All right, so. But again, it's the Washington Post saying it. So we got to look. Uh, who's the Washington Post? Washington Post is, you know, is uh, owned by Jeff Bezos, billionaire. They have they take six hundred million dollars from the CIA. It's John Podesta, is one of the lead writers. It's the Saudis, the Saudis. Remember, I mean, there's all kinds of shit going on over there. Remember when Qatar gave Bill Clinton a million dollars for his birthday into the Clinton Foundation? Where's the, where's the outrage? Where was the outrage about, uh, you know, Arab politics then? So who is this guy, Jamal Khashoggi? So he disappeared on October 8, reading from uh, Wikipedia, <laughs> the Bible. All right, so is, uh, he's a Saudi Arabian journalist, author and former general manager and editor of Al Arab, Al Arab News Channel. He also served as... Editor of Saudi Arabian newspaper, blah, blah, blah. Khashoggi fled Saudi Arabia in September 2017. He said that the Saudi Arabian government had banned him from Twitter. Oh, poor guy. And he later wrote newspaper articles critical of the Saudi government. All right. So that's a no-no. In their country, that's a no-no. Right? So he fled. Right? He fled. Khashoggi has, has been sharply critical of Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Sal Salman and the country's king, King Salman of Saudi Arabia. He also appeared, that's a no no in that country. You can't, you don't do that, right? So if you're critical and you're a journalist, all right, so that's what they do, right? It's Saudi Arabia. They chop off heads, they, 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 women, they can't drive, they, for, for infidelity, they shoot the woman out in the middle of the street. All right, so it's a barbaric, you know, primitive culture. But why is it that? You know, all the, all, you know, they hold, I think, like 3% of the U.S. treasuries. There's no outrage when they give us money. There's only outrage when they take care of some loudmouth journalist. Or is he a loudmouth? I'm being, I'm playing the other side of this because it doesn't make sense, right? When you find out who he is. Right? So, so who is he? So, Jamal Khashoggi. Kish, Kish, 
was born in Medina in 58. Listen to this. His grandfather was uh, was of Turk origin, mar- uh, or- origin, married a Saudi Arabian a woman, and was personal physician to King Sada, <laughs> the founder of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Right? The, the guy's got his family. He's he's like he's like he's like a like a Osama bin Laden. He's he's in the family to the tune of four billion dollars net worth of the family, right? Right, and he's also the founder of the Kingdom. Of Khashoggi is the nephew of late high-profile Saudi Arabian arms dealer Adna Khashoggi, known for his part in Iran Contra. Pow, who estimated who's estimated to have a net worth of four hundred to four billion dollars. Estimated four billion dollar net worth. He received his elementary and, ed- and secondary education in Saudi Arabia and obtained a bachelor's degree in business administration from Indiana University. That's not in 1982. So that's not very surprising that they, you know, the Saudi Arabians, they, they get all this money, they send their kids to American schools, colleges, learn how to speak English properly or whatever. So... Khashoggi began his career as a regional manager in '84. Blah blah. Okay, look, this—that's enough reading, right? So the, the guy is a—the guy is a—has deep ties to the Saudi. He's a Saudi Arabian government. Uh, he's a Saudi Arabian citizen. He's not an American, right? They're already spinning it. Oh, he's an American journalist. No, he—he he fled Saudi Arabia and he's hiding in the U.S. Right? And then it, and, and then. And somehow they, he was he landed in Turkey, right? So, so that's who the guy is. But let's talk about what happened. So he's in Saudi Arabia. He's in Turkey. Right? He's in Turkey, right? And the Saudis somehow lured him into the embassy, the Saudi Arabian embassy in Turkey, right? And once in that embassy, he's therefore on. Saudi Arabian soil <clears throat> under Saudi law. Saudi Arabian citizen in Saudi Arabia, although it's an embassy, right? And they take the they say they're calling him a traitor, that he had somehow he had ties with Qatar, their enemy. Not Qatar, Qatar. <laughs> right? And and so they so they they they, they chopped him up. Right? Maybe that's the law there. Who knows? But that's not. It's not. I I just don't want to. I don't want it to be lumped to journalism, like because it's the fake news that's promoting this thing. Remember, it's the Washington Post promoting this story, right? CIA money, Jeff Bezos, billionaire money, promoting a hit on. Qatar, a hit on Saudi Arabia, and then Pompeo's over there shaking his hand, and Trump that morning is saying, oh, I talked to the king, there's no problem here, right? So they're trying to smear, they're trying to use this this situation to smear Trump, right? That's the Washington Post. Why? Because he got an election November 6th, and they're going to try to challenge him in 2020 and fail again, right? So there is politics surrounding this. Now, let's look at the other part of it. It's a journalist, right? Right? Should shouldn't a journalist, you know, have have the right to speak out and write whatever they want and expose corruption? Yes, yes, in this country. But look, I mean, I, for for lack of a better term, I guess I'm a journalist, right? And and people that are on YouTube doing this are journalists. Would I go into like you know life threatening situation? Uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the guy go out there too far, right? He's on the run, right? And he, and why are you on the run? Because you know they're going to kill you if they find you. We're going to throw you in a little box for speaking out, right? Yeah, there is some sort of, I, I got to agree that there's some sort of journalistic integrity here that needs to be protected. However, the promoters of this story, the Washington Post, is highly sus- suspect because of its because of the ties that I just told you. John Podesta is one of the lead writers, 
and orchestrators, the people that stole the 2016 election, took a million dollars from Qatar. They're so fucking corrupt and dirty, right? Bezos giving, you know, taking $600 million from the CIA. Now stop right there, right? So the Washington Post is not journalism anymore, right? The Washington Post is purchased by Jeff Bezos, a billionaire, to the tune of a hundred billion dollar net worth. It's not journalism. So to call any connection that this guy Khashoggi had with the Washington Post, right, as being journalism, right? They, they I think they're even saying that he was a contributing writer there or something. No, they they took him under their wing for political purposes, right? So that they could they could use his situation to smear Trump. That's why they do it, right? But is the Washington Post journalism? No, not at all. It's 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 not even close anymore. It was at one point. That's why the name resonates because there were two reporters that exposed the 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 Watergate uh, s- scandal, right? That's where that's where the Washington Post took off, but but the um, the the fact remains that uh, they're not they're not doing journalism anymore, and they're promoting the story about a guy who flees his country for whatever reason, right? He's on the run, and they catch him, uh, uh, you know, and in in a foreign country, bring him into you onto their soil. That's international law. No, no violations. No violations there. No heads roll here, right? That's if if a if a refugee if a if a fugitive is caught and brought to an embassy, it's of that nation to decide to do what they will with that national. And in this case, they chop them into pieces, right? So don't expect anything spectacular in terms of uh, uh, retribution or what's the word? Yeah, retribution from the Saudis, you know, or or any consequence. That's what I wanted to say. There's no, there, there will be no consequence to the, to the prince and the king of Saudi Arabia for this guy getting chopped up, even if there's a direct, even if there's a signed piece of paper that says, chop him up. The king and the and the prince signed the piece of paper and handed it to the hitmen, the fifteen hitmen that hit the hit, hit him in Turkey. Even if that piece of paper should pop up, it doesn't matter. It's a country doing the will of the country. That is the law of the land. Now, you want to change the law of the land? You want to? Well, why are you dealing with Saudi Arabia, who has a direct connection to nine eleven? Where was the outrage when? When, when all of the, the 20 passengers all had Saudi ties or, or bin Laden was getting his money, Osama bin Laden was getting his money from the Saudi royalty, the, the orchestrator of 9-11. Where was the outrage then? Where, now all of a sudden a journalist gets chopped into pieces for speaking out against, for breaking the laws of his own land. And now we're expected to be you know, we're, we're supposed to be so irate about it. So that's my two cents on it. My name is Marcus Conti reporting. Peace.